If we read these four or five chapters in 1 John, what we can understand is this, that he is portraying this big picture, and big picture is this, this is about authentic Christianity. How a believer should live his life and how true and faithful believers in the Lord must be. And that is what Apostle John is writing this letter. And uh, during his time, there were these false teachers, they grew in numbers, they started speaking heresies in the church. They gave themselves in evil sexual practices and they believed and they relied on human wisdom and knowledge. And in that context, John is writing some of the some of the fund, some of the basic teachings that we as believers need to follow. And what do we what do we see in this God in this letter? John writes the letter to be aware of what is going on in this world. Right? And he says, <clears throat> Do not love the world. John is warning his people about those, those people who, who deny Jesus as the Savior. He tells us how children of God must live and love one another. And he seals this letter with this beautiful thing, that is the love of God. And he says, this is love. He calls, this is love. He's, he's giving this explanation, this is love. Now let me tell you this, in today's context, Love is a word that is always overused, right? For example, we say, I love pizza. I just love her singing. Her voice was angelic. I just love the way, Pastor, how you're preaching. You know, I just love the way you did the presentation. I love this mall. It has got everything there. You know, we just sometimes use this word again and again. But actually, people have never understood the meaning of love. <coughs> And by the way, when it comes to love, people also give some biggest advices, right? Whether it is in a relation setup or in a family situation or in a workplace or in your friend circle, they give lots of advices on love. For example, they say, argue one thing at a time. Don't bring all the arguments in one, together and say, argue one thing at a time. And some of the advices we commonly hear is this. Keep the past in the past. Don't make comparisons. Listen without, uh, listen without making any judgments or assumptions. But I like the last advice. You should all listen to this. The last advice is this. Don't be mad if they don't follow your advice. Right? But when you hear the list of advices from people, and you might be wondering, oh, well, it, 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 it looks the same. Probably it is spoken by some other religious leader. Probably other religions is talking about the same thing. You know, you've got to love. You've got to be kind. You need to do this. You need to do that. And when you look at all of these thoughts and comments and all of this, one thing that is very clear that people don't want to read God's word. People don't want to listen to what God's word says. What I'm trying to say here is this. They listen to, to the advices they listen to the songs on love. They listen to motivational speakers who speak on love. They follow all of those religious leaders that talk about love. But none of them teach how you need to love. How it should be done. But that's where here our, our word of God is so different. It is so powerful. And here Apostle John tells here how it needs to be done. So John brings out one of the most beautiful things of authentic Christianity and how a believer must live. The answer is love. Right? The answer is love. Now, when he says in, in verse 7, Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves uh, has been born of God and knows God. Now, when he when he wrote this, he doesn't have to look for another example. Because he lived with Jesus, he brought Jesus as the perfect example. And with that, I want to give three lessons for all of us this morning. As a child of God, we need to display his nature. Amen? 
as the child of God, we need to display his, his nature. The Bible says, let us love one another. This is what will make you an authentic disciple of our Lord. When you follow the, his command, that is love one another. Right? So that will make you an authentic disciple. That will, that will, you are actually displaying his nature. Like sometimes people do not one of we carefully put this uh, vision statement here. Look at this. To present the gospel of Jesus Christ and practice Christ-like living. And people want to see our lives being changed. People want to see our, our lives being transformed. Right? And we as a church, we as a believers, we as believers, we can never express the love of God unless we have experienced God's unconditional love. Unless we have experienced God's sacrificial love, forgiving love and holy love of God. We can never express that. And we can never express 1 Corinthians 13. We all know that, right? It's the Valentine season. We may go back and look for the promises in 1 Corinthians 13. And we know this. We can never express the love that is mentioned in 1 Corinthians 13 unless there is a change of heart. Unless there is... There is this transformation that takes place in our hearts. And how does this transformation take place? When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This transformation takes place when you say yes to Jesus. This change of heart begins when you say, God, irrespective of what the word is saying, I will choose to follow you. Right? And that's how we display his nature. That's how we display his nature. To, to, to show God's love. Now look at this in Romans 5.5, 5, we see this and I'll put it in, in, in simple words for all of us to understand. God has poured his love, agape, God has poured his love into our hearts and the Holy Spirit enables us to follow this command that is to love one another. And my prayer for all of us this, this morning is this, as a child of God, we will display his nature in our workplace, in our family, right? Sometimes when I pick up topics like this, let me tell you, the, the temptation is so big, you know, how am I going to follow this Lord? But this is what we need to do, this as a child of God, display His nature. The second point is this, as a child of God, make efforts to know Him intimately. Amen? As a child of God, make efforts to know Him intimately. Whoever does not love, whoever does not love, does not know God because God is love. So we need to make efforts to know him intimately. Now let me tell you this, this is not like intellectual knowing. Sometimes we are too good in reading books, too good in listening to the sermons, too good in reading the articles, not just gathering information intellectually to know about Jesus, but there should be a heart connection. Amen? There should be a heart connection. And how does it happen? When you take time out in the presence of God by worshipping Him. You know, there was one particular season I was teaching our fellowship and we met online. There's one thing that you would never compromise is this worshipping the Lord. Take time. Extend the time of worship. When you spend time worshipping God, you will know better. You will, you will get to know Him better. By listening to Him, by abiding in Him, by surrendering to Him, and by obeying to Him. And these are the efforts that we can make intentionally to know Jesus better. And that's how we walk with Him intimately. Now, here's the point. When you know Jesus intimately, there is this love that naturally flows from your heart. Have you come across your friends and family? Sometimes when they enter your house, you just feel some sort of a change because they are so close. They walk close with Jesus. And as soon as they enter, like one smile just changes. Like one cup of coffee this person makes and gives to you and like thinks like, oh wow, you felt like a complete change. You know, you felt that love, you felt that peace, right? So that, 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 that. To, to, get into that, uh, to get into that place, we need to walk with God intimately. And I want to ask this question for this. What are the efforts you are making to know Jesus intimately? What are the efforts? And if you look at Philippians chapter 3 verse 7, I want to read this. If you turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3 verse 7 to 10. Paul says here, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. 
What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Verse 10, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. What a beautiful passage to meditate on when it comes to knowing Christ. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 10. Now what Paul is saying here is this. No matter whatever credentials I possess, that is nothing compared to the relationship I have with my Savior. Amen? Whatever accomplishments you have this morning, it's nothing compared to the relationship that you will intentionally, you know, have in the days to come. And I mean, that is like the crown, that is the gold. Right, so you will not, you may be uh, having degrees, working in some of the top companies, like whatever accomplishments, praise God, but that is nothing compared to the relationship that you have with your Savior. And to keep that, to keep that goal, we have to intentionally work. We have to intentionally make efforts so that we could know our Savior more and more and more. So look at this last few lines of Philippians chapter 3 verse 10. It says, I want to participate. What, what Paul is saying here is this. I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of his resurrection. I want a fellowship. Of, I, don't, I, want, I want to be partaking. I want to be a, a partner in sharing in his sufferings. Oh wow, what a commitment. What a commitment. And then that's the effort. He said, I want to be in this place where I know how Jesus went through this. You know, this is a whole mystery of how, how God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. But I want to know. I want to know his power. I want to know, I want to know this. So that's the second point. So as a child of God, let's make intentional efforts to know him intimately. And the last point is this. As a child of God, always remember the demonstration of God's love. Amen. Always remember the demonstration of God's love. Now look at this. When God created this world, the sun, the moon, the stars, the birds of the air, the animals, the ocean, the fishes, it displayed God's power and wisdom. It displayed the power of God. It displayed the, the, the wisdom of God, how he beautifully designed this world. But when he looked at the sinful world, he demonstrated his love. For God so loved the world and he gave his only begotten son and whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that's how he demonstrated his love. And, 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 and John gives this example here. He, does, he doesn't have to look for a reference. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't look for his fellow disciples. He look at him, look at... But he said, this is love. Verse 10, this is love. Not that we loved God, but he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Jesus came, he lived, he died, and he rose again, and he's interceding for us. And we can never love anyone with our own efforts. We can never love. When we look at our history of people who have done wrongs to us, we may have to write an encyclopedia of okay, this person on this particular date, this particular time have done this for me, right? But we can never love people, love one another with our own effort, but through Jesus, but with the enablement of the Holy Spirit, we can love. And you will never know the true meaning, uh, the meaning of true love, but if you look at the demonstration of what God the Father had done, through Jesus on the cross of Calvary. And that's when you know that this is love. This is love. And I pray that we will always go back. When we talk about love, let's not forget the demonstration of God's love. And when we go back to this place, we will understand, wow, mine is nothing, Lord. My efforts are nothing, Lord. You have given your son for me. Just for me. 
H.A. Ironside, he was one of the popular Bible teacher and author. He had a conversation with a woman. And uh, the woman came to him and said, I don't have any use for the Bible uh, or uh, I don't believe, believe in any of this Christian superstition. It is enough for me. I know that God loves me and I know that God is love. So this author, Einstein, he, he asked her, said, well, how do you know that? She responded, well, I know, I know it all my life. Uh, and then again, this author asked her, do you think everyone knows that God loves them? Do you know everyone that knows it? And then she said, yes, everyone knows that God is love. Everyone knows that God is love. Then Einstein asked two crucial questions. Do you think in... Do you think that women in India, when they sacrifice their children, when they follow all of those ritual practices, do you think that they have this idea of how God loving them? And she said, that is their superstition. And then again, Ayan said, asked this question. In Africa, people bow down before the wood and stones and uh, they make idols and they tremble in fear because if they don't worship, their crops get uh, spoiled and their property get destroyed. They feel that disease will come and you know, attack their families. And do you think, how, how do they, uh, do you think that they have any idea of God's love? She said in a very diplomatic way, well, in every civilized country, we know that God is love. What she's trying to say is, people who have knowledge, I think they will understand God is love. But Einstein responds to this woman in a beautiful way. She says, how do you know this? How do you know this? Do you, do you, uh, uh, did your forefathers teach about God's love? Did you learn this in school? How do you know this? And then he brings to the scripture and he says, this is love. Jesus coming for you, dying for you, forgiving your sins. That is love and that changed our heart. This morning, let's not be confused with any other things that actually, you know, interferes our life. We should always go back to this. God, this is what you have done for me on the cross of Calvary. You know, I want to go back to that place and I want to experience that love. So as, as a child of God, as a church, let's always remember this. Let's display his nature. Amen. Let's display his nature. Let's make efforts to know him intimately. And let's remember the demonstration of God's love. What we uh, see, uh, you know, what, what God the Father has done for us through Jesus on the cross of Calvary.